is um, a little bit of the process of trying to go through and make create a digital marketing strategy. A little bit of the process, uh, one, you know, steps one through three, and then I want to go a little bit through the SEO auditing part, uh, more on the technical side. Uh, anybody that does SEO will most likely have seen all this information, but it's just a refresher. But then uh, I'm going to try to do some actual tips of uh, you know how to go about doing it. And then Jason's going to come up and he's going to talk to you about PPC. So. Uh, without further ado, kind of uh, going out, uh, what we're going to talk about is, uh, again, figuring out first where you stand, kind of where your site is, uh, what kind of, uh, pretty much what you have. And then uh, what we're going to do, we're talk about is setting, setting up strategic business goals. And I'm not talking about just what are you going to do for SEO or PPC, just the business as a whole. Uh, where are you going, where your goals are. Uh, then taking, out, taking in, into account some past successes that you might have, kind of working those into the next uh, roadmap, uh, developing the actionable, um, an actionable strategy and getting through it, and then finally create a roadmap to keep you organized and working towards achieving those goals. So, uh, kind of changing our mindset and going from, uh, you know, just tactics, so like, for example, SEO, like link building or on-page optimization, off-page, doing all that stuff to thinking about strategy as a whole. So putting strategic goals ahead of tactics, what does that mean? Uh, first of all, take uh, you know take the time to honestly assess uh, all the different aspects of your business, and I'm talking about honestly, looking at everything and sitting down and writing down exactly how you, in a sense, can rank yourself uh, amongst all these different things. So I'm going to take I'm making up I'm making up uh, you know the average Joe's from the movie Dodgeball. Uh, this imaginary business, I'm going to kind of go through this scenario of how I would go about doing it. So first of all, uh, looking at the site itself. So both hardware, uh, your server, your uh, and your software, your CMS. So in my case here, my site is running on old CMS. Um, it makes uh, updates. The, the site is slow. It makes updates nearly impossible. And also, you know, I have no no way to book anything online, no e-commerce module, no, nothing like that. So I have a long way to go. And then if I had to rate myself, I would say maybe I'm still making it happen, but. Uh, I could be doing better. So second, compile a list of all the valuable content that you have. Your words, the actual content on your site, your images, your videos, uh, your social media accounts, anything that you know you can think of, anything that constitutes content, uh, make a list of it and kind of try to figure out. So in my case, I'm saying that my content is more marketing based, it's not in depth, it's not providing any, I guess, useful information apart from people knowing my, my services and uh, my products. Um, I have great images, but no videos. Third, assess your analytics, how people interact with your site, and how they go about converting and becoming paid customers. So just because you were smart, last month you came to the analytics session uh, that uh, Derek Shields and Kristen Ziegler did. did. Uh, you got some tips, and you went, you worked with your developer, or you did it yourself, and you put some, some you know, you use Google Tag Manager, and you're pretty much up on uh, oh, pop and code about you know tracking stuff on the site. Unfortunately, uh, you cannot track offline marketing activity that results on people taking action on your site. So you got to look into that. So um, we're looking at that. Next, uh, what are your current customers? What do they like? What they don't like? Uh, in my case, uh, any information that you can, can be useful. Your a uh, age, uh, male versus female, occupations, and all that stuff. Um, uh, assessing the ROI of your SEO and PPC. Uh, in my case, SEO, you know, what is that? I uh, never heard of it. Is that the one with the keywords? Somebody did that for me a couple of years ago. That's kind of where I stand. Uh, and then for PPC, somebody has done it for me. Uh, I'm getting good return. Uh, I'm getting subscriptions. I'm getting a lot of different things that I want, but I know I can, I can do better. Um, looking at the competition, uh, looking at the you know gyms in the in the, in the ten mile radius, see what they're doing, see how they're having the success, if they're having any any success, if they're online, if they're offline, what exactly are they doing? And lastly, take into account your marketing budget and your personnel. I mean, if you don't have the money, you don't have the money to work on a lot of things. So you really have to prioritize. And if you have the personnel, do you need a web developer? Do you need? Can you just do everything yourself? There's a lot of different things that you have to take into account. So, um, you know, this year, uh, let's say I have a big budget, I want to open another location, um, you know, I'm by myself doing a bunch of stuff, and I also have a, you know, web developer that helps me every now and then. So that's kind of where I stand. I have, you know, rated myself on all of these. So the next one is, uh, according to that, I have to go, um, you know, I'm, I'm making the in-depth assessment, and then I have to go set up business goals. 
So in my case, again, example, average shows, I have the gym and I have, you know, four goals. I want a 25 increase in gym memberships. Again, this has nothing to do with specific tactics, SEO or PPC. Like, it's not just about traffic or whatever, but I want to get more gym memberships. The second one, I want to see a 40% lift in one-on-one, -on -one, for example, uh, personal training appointments and nutrition services. I figured out for my business, this is a high profit margin uh, service or product, and I want to push more of it. Um, 30% increase in profits from merchandise sales, you know, people buying stuff in my store, and if I can have an e-commerce site as well, that I can sell stuff over, more the better. Uh, and then reach 1,500 newsletter subscribers. So according to that, uh, I have to look at my past successes to kind of figure out where I have, uh, where there's already opportunities and what, I, what else I can exploit, essentially. So uh, what I figured out is that members on my email list um, you know, buy merchandise a lot more than others, like twice as likely to buy something. So that's something that I do know. My audience likes and shares posts, uh, posts about healthy eating or, uh, you know, motivational pics or memes or whatever more than anything else. Uh, and that generates traffic to my site. Uh, users uh, who look at uh, specific pages convert uh, to, uh, you know, two times the normal rate. And I also know a lot of stuff about, you know, their Facebook likes. You know, a lot of, my, a lot of the people that, you know, follow me, they also like American Ninja Warrior, which is awesome. I'm not the only one, right? Uh, so uh, at this point, knowing all that stuff, you also have to figure out how much are these, war these users worth in your business. So for example, a membership uh, that we were talking before, you know, over 12 months, somebody's paying $100 plus everything that they buy, this could be a $1,500 conversion if somebody sh signs up. So putting a number next to each one of these makes it a lot, you know, gives you an idea and a number in your head that you are striving to reach all the time. Um, so once you have that, you kind of have to go through uh, prioritizing what you need to cover. So we went to the, the first step of looking at your uh, your infrastructure, your you know your site, your CMS, your uh, uh, everything that you have, your content. So at this point, according to everything that I said in the first step, I know that I need to change my CMS and refresh my site. Uh, you know, I'm hearing that WordPress is pretty good. I might give it a try. I've got to talk to someone, get some ideas, and figure out what I want to do. Uh, next, I need to switch the type of content that I'm writing. I'm only writing about my services, but I need to write, some, write something more in depth. That's what people like, that's what people share. That's kind of where I need to be, uh, and I'm not there right now. Same thing about copies, copy images, videos. Uh, it's time to engage, engage in SEO, because I like you know, the whole free clicks um, idea. It's working for me, and if I haven't done anything there, I know that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of opportunity coming, so I'm going to go into that and then expand on my PPC efforts, uh, up my budget, you know, hire Jason to do it for me and, you know, just kick it up a notch. So prioritizing, uh, I call it where importance meets opportunity, where, you know, how important everything is. For example, my site is very important and making my site better will also help me reach my goals, my business goals. So knowing that, uh, you go about creating a roadmap. You have all the things that you need to do in each bucket and then uh, you spend month one and two going through this whole exercise. Uh, ideally, you should be able to cover everything in, uh, in your business. Uh, a lot of people that work in agency environments, you know, people come to you already with those business in mind, um, with those business goals in mind, and you're kind of in the silo of SEO or BBC. But everything that you do when you set a roadmap within SEO, for example, that we're going to go through, uh, we need to be thinking about again those gym memberships, your one-on-one -on -one consultations, anything that will make you reach your overall business goals. Uh, month three through six, we go, we're going to focus on the high priority items because those are the ones that, you know, where the, where the opportunity lies, where I'm most likely going to make the most, uh, you know, I'm going to make around towards reaching my goals. And then month uh, six through uh, 12 and on, we're going to focus on the red of the medium uh, and low items. And then, uh, in a sense, kind of through the whole process, track your main KPIs and figure out if something is working or not from the first six months and kind of adjust accordingly. Does this all make sense? I'm going fairly fast. All right, Scott is telling me yes, so I'll go, I'll go with it. <clears throat> so where does SEO fit in? Um, well, SEO, what, as what I'm, say, what I'm saying, is a big part of the equation. It touches on a lot of different things from everything that I told you in the, you know, in the beginning. Uh, you know, it touches on your CMS, uh, it touches on your infrastructure, it touches on content, it touches on conversion, it touches on a lot of different things. Um, 
So during the, the step one, when you did, when you were doing that honest assessment, you also uh, most likely when you were doing when you were doing the SEO part, you did a full on audit, uh, going through and pretty much looking at everything that has to do uh, that's SEO related and try to figure out exactly where you stand. Uh, in our case, you know, with average shows, we didn't even know what SEO was. So somebody, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of different things that we could be changing, could be working on. So, um, you know, the client has come to you, for example, if you're an agency and they tell you they want to rank right away, this is where the honest assessment comes through. Uh, you know, Kanye is laughing right there. Uh, being, you know, again, having that honest assessment and being able to talk to the client about, you know, how to go about achieving the goals makes it a lot easier to have the relationship and uh, be able to actually achieve the goals in a 12 month time or, you know, during a specific period. So the things that I guess that I'm going to go through, uh, again, for the people that do SEO on a daily, ba on a daily basis, this is a little bit more, uh, you know, you know all this stuff, but again, I just want to give a refresher. Uh, we want to look at site architecture. We want to be looking at accessibility and indexation. Uh, those are big. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different problems that can go wrong there. Uh, On-page optimization and proper keyword targeting. It's pretty self-explanatory. Content analysis, uh, you know, duplication, types of assets, and level of optimization of each one of those assets. Um, inbound link footprint, uh, we'll say spend much. Uh, there's a lot of different, you know, having been in an agency and having been in-house, uh, you get all kinds of clients, you know, people that have trusted other people to do stuff for them. And, uh, you know, you, in a sense, you, you, you inherit something very, uh, <coughs> very bad. Uh, and you end up <laughs> spending the next year just polishing the turd. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, uh, site speed, it's, it's very big, especially in the past year, year and a half. Uh, everybody's talking about it, making the site faster, mobile friendliness. Uh, you know, the whole idea of the whole pitch and zoom does not work anymore. We need a mobile site, you know, something that works, something that's user friendly. And then finally, performance tracking. We talked about that a lot last month. No, last, yeah, last month. Derek went through the whole thing, um, setting, set, setting benchmarks and figuring out where you are and where you're going. So as SEO gets prioritized as part of the overall digital strategy, again, we have to prioritize what, to, according to how we, I guess, where we stand, we need to figure out what goes first. Do we need to tackle our content? Do we need to tackle our site and making it better, making it faster, making it mobile friendly? So I'm gonna go through each, each one of these, kind of focus on the top five, and again, give some pointers. Um, so starting with site architecture, um, looking at the URL architecture, is it too flat, is it too deep, is it just right? So we're kind of looking at the two, um, two different uh, you know, site architectures here. One is flat, one is not so flat. Um, in general, this is my opinion, some people might disagree, but uh, if the site architecture I feel is too flat, uh, kind of like the topical focus is diluted, and uh, you know each page uh, kind of gets put at a disadvantage, it's not as easy to rank, it's not because it doesn't get the attention that it needs. So if you have your same you know, category pages, the same as your product pages, for example, everything kind of gets diluted, and in a sense you're not placing any, um, I guess any importance on the right pages. So you kind of make it hard on yourself, um, but when you have something a little bit more, uh, that goes a little bit more up and down, you know, ideally every page will still be within three or four clicks from the home page, easily findable, easily crawlable, uh, we can get it in the index and be able to get it to rank. So if it were me, I would try to go with something like that. If I had something like that, I would try to move it and try to make it better. Make sense? Okay. I keep going. Um, then we're going to talk about accessibility and indexation. This is uh, this goes, I guess, in the more the technical piece. Um, I'm not going to talk tech mumbo jumbo, but uh, this is something in, in which you're looking if you're in any way, shape, or form, kind of uh, making it hard for the search engines to crawl and index your content. Uh, if you don't get it in the index, those pages are not going to show up in the search results, and that's kind of again you're shooting yourself in the foot. <coughs> So too many errors, too many black parts, the entire site, there's a lot of different things. So this is where, I guess, Screaming Frog goes in. Uh, how many people are using Screaming Frog on a daily basis? Sweet, awesome. So uh, Screaming Frog, again, we can do everything. Um, crawling the site, uh, you, can do, you can do a lot of different things. 
but the first thing to figure out where you have the problems is to um, to go through and actually crawl the site with Screaming Frog. Now, if you have a ginormous site, this might take a little while. You might have to break it down a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, but once you crawl the site, uh, again, we have a, there's a very useful resource that I have found has been out for probably a couple years. So it's from Sear, where you know first Kino Will is from. Uh, it's a it's a ridiculous guide about all the different ways that you can um, that you can use Screaming Frog. It's like five different, 55 different ways. Uh, again, pretty awesome. You can do everything under the sun with this tool. Uh, go ahead, read it, use it. So once you uh, <coughs> Once you've gone through and you crawl the site, the next thing is to go and actually export it to Excel. Uh, we, first of all, you gotta review HTTP status codes uh, for errors, look at the manner robots, uh, fill for unnecessary blocks and anything that again blocks the crawlers. Uh, so if you have gone through, you have exported the site, you kinda look at uh, the status code, anything 200, <coughs> anything 200 is okay, that means the for, for anybody that doesn't know, 200 means that the page is there. Uh, the server went back, served the page just fine without any problems. And from an SEO, so a user sees it, a robot, a robot, a crawler sees it, and then any link equity, a link equity that has built that has been built to that page is there. So it goes there. Uh, a 301 is a, what we call a permanent redirect, is where uh, a page moves to a different URL. Uh, and then we do a 301 to pretty much let this uh, both users that don't necessarily realize that the one 301 by crawler will know and will pass the link equity. So any links that are pointing back to your site to that specific page, the link equity would, will be moved to the new page. So we love 200 301s. 302s, not so much. Uh, 302s are the server by default usually. <coughs> so. What a 302 does, it sends the user and the robot to the new page, but any link equity that has been built, so if you've built 20 links to that specific page, first of all, if you build 20 links to a page, you're awesome. Uh, uh, but if you, again, if, you're t if there's 20 links and you're providing all this link equity, all of that is not gonna uh, get passed on uh, to the next page. So what that means that, you know, the crawler is gonna keep coming back and looking at that page and expecting it to come, to come back because it's temporary. 404, it's pretty self-explanatory, the page that does not exist. Ideally, you will have some kind of 404 page with a custom message to tell the person, to tell the user to go to a different uh, part of your site, look at it kind of, instead of just going back and leaving. Uh, again, 404 is not a good thing uh, for a number of different reasons. And then 500 errors, that's a server error, that means that something's wrong with your site, and if you cannot fix it yourself, you probably need to talk to a developer. This is a conversation that you know sometimes goes well, sometimes doesn't. It's you know it's up to you to have that conversation. <coughs> Next, uh, dealing with server logs and crawl budgets. This is a very fun activity for anybody that wants to geek out. <coughs> uh, so, are the search engines uh, crawling their own content? So, doing log file analysis. Uh, so, a server log file is a server output containing a record a record of all requests. Uh, that a server receives. So you need all your logs. Uh, getting them, it's pretty, getting them, it could be, you know, you might need somebody to help you out, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a file that lives in your server, and you can get to try to figure out uh, what ha what's happening. So every time there's a server request, any anytime anybody actually goes to the server and requests something, whether it would be a user or a crawler or anybody, this is kind of what gets uh, gets added to your server log. So there's a bunch of different uh, elements to it. So first of all, you have your server IP, and then the timestamp when you know the request was made, the method, uh, the request URI, uh, the HTTP status code of the user agent. So there's a lot of information here. A lot of times there's a, you know um, there's how long it took how long it took for the page to get downloaded, which is pretty awesome when you're trying to, to figure out uh, uh, page speed. Uh, for a specific page, you know, for a long period of time, you can actually try to, you know, put it in a graph and figure out what's, what's wrong with something. Um, so it's useful because you can find out how much crawl budget is wasted, how much crawl budget is wasted and where. Uh, when we're talking about crawl budget, we're, talking, we're not talking about crawl rate. Crawl budget is how many pages a crawler would possibly uh, actually crawl on your site versus crawl rate is like how often. So crawl budget, you need it, uh, by looking at your crawl budget, you're kind of trying to figure out what, uh, if you have any crawl deficiencies. 
uh, if the content that you actually do want in the in the in the SERPs is not getting in the SERPs because it's not even getting um, crawled and indexed. Uh, you can discover accessibility errors just like you can do webmaster tools. Uh, this is just a more extensive way to figure out, you know, if uh, 404s, whatever, if, you, if you have dead pages, whatever you need to fix, and then you can learn more uh, more about what it takes, uh, how long it takes it for the pages to load. It's a pretty awesome tool. If you have a giant site, this can be very, uh, this can be a rather like large undertaking. There's a lot of different uh, different tools out there. There's an awesome, um, there's a very very good. Oh, you can pretty much anything that you ever want to learn about silver logs but buildvisible.com, log file analysis. Uh, it's very long, it covers a lot of different things, a lot of tools, it's really good to go through. So next, uh, reviewing the robots.txt to figure out uh, if there's any unnecessary blanks, uh, blocks and instances of hidden con behind code. Um, so this is kind of what the robots.txt looks like. Uh, this is where you tell Google what to crawl and what not to crawl. So, um, if you want parts of your, if you, if you want parts of your site um, to stay away and to stay out of the index, this is how you can tell Google. And one of the ways that you can tell Google to not go through uh, and look at it. So, if you have, you know, content that's that's hidden, uh, it's premium, it's behind the login screen. This is how you go about, you know, disallowing something and making sure that it doesn't get into the index. Now, if you go disallow pretty much all, that means that. Uh, you're pretty much telling Google or Bing or anybody really that please do not um, just don't look at my site at all. So nothing is going to go in the index. So there's no SEO value. There's really nothing. Um, so that's one of the things that for any SEO, we just we go in and we look at every not every day, but I, you know myself and for example Scott has been working you know, about a year and a half ago. We're working with a client that every six months or every three months that we're doing an update on the site an old robots file that had that exact command. Keep going live and all of a sudden we would see a very big drop and figure out this is what we need to go back and fix. <coughs> so the next thing is uh, talking about uh, you know building sites with JavaScript and other scripting languages that are a little bit more dynamic in nature. Um, this is uh, the Repo Sound Select site. Uh, if you go through, for anybody that doesn't have it, there's a Chrome plugin called Web Developer. It's the same thing for uh, Firefox. Uh, it's a very useful tool. This is the way that you can go about um, turning off JavaScript, turning off CSS, and figuring out how does your site look if all those files are not there. So turning off JavaScript, for example, for this site, it turns it into this. There's nothing there. It's pretty much blind. Um, so if, if you want to get something ranked, you can't because everything, all, all your content is hitting behind. Um, this pretty much wall. Um, so, advice to not fully develop a site in JavaScript, Flash, or any other dynamic language. You can, you can obviously use JavaScript very well, just don't hide content behind it. <coughs> so, I have a couple. There's another one that I always go to to make a point. It's called fatface.com. It's, it's an e-commerce site that, that sells clothes, but uh, you pretty much do the same thing and pretty much everything breaks. So. Not a good experience. So, is my site up to code? What am I doing wrong? Or what am I doing? With my, my biggest opportunities lie. So, where do I start? Optimize title tags. This is something that's you know, it's very self-explanatory, but a lot of people get it wrong. Um, every page should have a primary. Should be should be targeting a primary term. You want to stick about 55 to 60 characters, even though the length of the title tag should be about 512 pixels. Uh, there's a couple tools out there that you can use to figure that out. How your title tag, when you write it, would look once that uh, once that listing is up in the SERPs. Uh, unique, click and test meta descriptions. Meta descriptions are not going to help you rank better, but if you have an awesome meta description and you rank third, you might get that click versus the person that uh, that, uh, that ranks number one. So you can use it as a, as a sales tool. Uh, for to test click-through rate. So H1 tag containing primary keyword or a close variation. Um, that's always the best practice for me. That's how I use it. Uh, so every key, every key page contains considerable amount of optimized content instead of, uh, you know, just very thin content that talks about whatever um, and the whole practice. So pretty much just doing keyword research, find, finding 500 words and then writing 500 pages with 100, you know, words on each page. That's when the big panda comes around and kind of takes care of you. Um, 
going back, sorry. You can do again, you can do all that stuff, discover all that stuff uh, just by using Screaming Frog, crawling the site, exporting it, and doing your research there. Also, Google Master Tools will show you a lot of different, um, you know, duplicate meta descriptions, duplicate title tag, missing title tags, a lot of good information. Uh, so next in my set to code, again, the same thing about my URLs. Uh, I try to live by these five, you know, rules. Uh, again, with my URLs, try to have as proper uniform uh, naming conventions as possible. Uh, target, targeted keywords exist in the page URLs. I'll show you a couple. Uh, I'll show you an example. Words are separated by the hyphen. Capital letters are not used. Um, and then URLs do not contain long query strings. This is something that you might not be able to avoid, but if you can, you should. So this is a you know SEO unfriendly URL. There's a lot of different stuff that you know gets added here. This could be happening for a lot of different reasons that we're not going to go into. But if you turn this into this, you know, uh, I picked this because I was looking at a at a personalized personalized gift site. And this was a good example. So. Um, so one and the other, this is very friendly. If this shows up in the SERPs and somebody put it in a graved cigar case, that's also going to be highlighted. It's a lot more, it's a lot more user friendly. It's a lot easier to find. Uh, it's just all around better. So this is much better. About my internal links. So review internal links to determine if you know you're overusing anchor text, if you're overusing anything, if you're optim over optimizing in any way. So if you have 500 pages on your site and from each one of those 500 pages, 499 pages, you link it to another page with the same exact anchor text, you might get in trouble. This time the other, you know, um, penguin might get you, but um, um, you kind of have to, at this day and age, you kind of have to be a little more strategic about how you link from page to page and having the same thing over and over again kind of might raise a red, a red flag and get you penalized. There's also, uh, I guess, uh, a tip that you know I had experimented with back in the day. Uh, there has been some stuff, some stuff written up about it. Uh, usually, what Google says and what we, what is common knowledge is that once Google starts going through a, um, a piece of content and it finds a link to a site, uh, that first that anchor text um, is what it's going to count when it, when it's time to rank the other page that you're linking to. But there has been, you know, including myself, which I've done it. Uh, there has been some, some, I guess there's a school of thought that if you actually link a second time from the same piece of text by use, for example, uh, um, an anchor link uh, to another page, then you have different anchor text, there's a very good chance that that same, that, that next, that second link to that page is also going to, the anchor text is going to count as well. Um, there has been a couple of posts on Moz over the past three years or so. Somebody in Italy did it. There have been different, um, you know, people have experimented with this. So if anybody wants to do it, it will be awesome, you know, a good case study. So if you did do it, see me, we can bring you up here and talk about it. Uh, okay, so common types of content duplication, another big thing is, uh, again, duplicate metadata. Uh, the way you know stolen content, somebody takes your takes your content, puts it on their site, it's duplicate. So the non www versus non w um, subdomain index default all being the same page, but all being treated differently. Um, quotation. So if you're using quotations, reuse content syndication, affiliate feeds. If you are an e-commerce site and you have affiliates and you give them your feed, and they're posting the same thing on their sites, you might get in trouble or you might have a problem. Um, so printer version of pages, a lot of, a lot of sites do it. Uh, similar product descriptions, um, you know, selling the same pair of shoes in six different colors and having the same description in six different pages. Again, it might become a problem. Uh, case insensitive URLs, Windows might treat it as a, you know, as not an error. But if you do it on a Linux server or a Unix server, that's probably, if you capitalize one letter, that's probably going to turn to 404 and you might have a problem there. Uh, again, user-generated content, uh, if people li are leaving reviews on that same page and copy-pasting the same thing, if you cannot necessarily, um, I guess, moderate it, it's a good thing to, uh, you know, figure out a way to deal with it. The best ways to deal with stuff is canonical tags, which pretty much tells, uh, uh, tells Google what the original source is and what, who needs to get, I guess, the link equity. Um, the robots file, again, if you have a duplicate page, for example, if you have all your print 
uh, versions of the specific pages on your one folder. You can make sure that those don't get crawled and don't get indexed. Uh, Three-on-one redirects, we talked about it. Uh, and no index tag in which you tell Google, do not put this page in the index. They find it, they don't crawl it. I mean, they crawl it, but they don't put it in the index. And then proactive prevention, knowing your site well enough, knowing your CMS well enough, so that you can pretty much avoid these. Easier said than done, but you know, if you're working with somebody that knows what they're doing, they should be able to do this easily. <clears throat> Again, there's a, there's a crap ton of tools that you can use to make this happen. Uh, webmaster tools, uh, Screaming Frog, Google Analytics, there's a lot of different stuff. So links, links, and more links. Uh, review the site's inbound, uh, inbound history uh, for inconsistencies. That's kind of what you're looking at. You can get more into it, but all of a sudden, um, what I always talk about is link velocity, how fast you're getting links, which, which this can happen. Anyone you might get, for example, a great press at some point, and all of a sudden you'll see that spike. <coughs> but if you look at you know, this little guy, this, you know, our furry friend here, doesn't necessarily like it. Uh, you know, Penguin might, hit, might you know, smack you uh, if they see something like this. Uh, so if this happened, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, in the duration of the month, you went up about, I don't know, 80,000 links to the site, there's something going on here. Uh, so this is something that you need to look at. Uh, if you had a guy do something for you, make sure that the guy is doing what he's supposed to do, and not just spamming the heck out of it. Um, there's a lot of different tools, uh, most open site explorer, majestic, ahrefs, there's a lot of stuff and also you can look into manual actions uh, within your webmaster tools to figure out if you're actually being hit, you will see in your analytics a huge, huge drop. Um, so, so I've said that, thank you for listening and next up, Jason's going to make it a read. <laughs>